I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Mr. Chairman, I want to welcome our esteemed witness. Um, I thank you for holding this hearing today on two very important but yet completely unrelated issues, the SPR and the Energy Efficiency Standards. Mr. Chairman, I agree with the underlying assumption that it is time to engage in a comprehensive review of the SPR, which was originally authorized under the Energy Policy and Conservation Act of 1975, in order to reduce the domestic impact of a disruption in supplies of petroleum products due to unforeseen or unavoidable circumstances. And I commend Secretary Moniz for initiating the process to conduct a comprehensive review of the SPR following, following both the July 2014 DOE Office of Inspector General report and the GAO Office study issued in September of last year recommended that the, Depart that the department do so. Mr. Chairman, circumstances have changed significantly since the SPR was established back in the 1970s. So it makes sense to examine future SPR requirements regarding size, composition, and geographic location to make sure the, that the country is better suited to deal with any potential uh, and future disruptions. Additionally, with little funding coming from Congress, I think it also behooves us to consider the resources necessary to operate the SPR and to ensure its long-term sustainability in order to preserve the infrastructure and the maintenance of these sites. Mr. Chairman, as for the other panel regarding a completely different topic, I must say that I hope that we will hold an additional hearing on DOE energy efficiency standards where members will have an opportunity to hear from uh, the agency in a direct manner, while engaging industry and other stakeholders, as we will do today, should be a part of the process that should not preclude having agency officials come before this committee to inform members on the reasoning and the justification behind promulgating the various standards that are under discussion. Mr. Chairman, Many of the energy efficiency measures contained in the draft bill are non-controversial and are bipartisan in nature, such as Section 4114, which modifies the definition of renewables to include thermal energy under the Federal Renewable Energy Purchase Requirements established in Section 203 of EPAC 2005. This language represents an example of DOE industry, and energy efficiency advocates all working together to come up with a legislative fix that all sides have agreed to. However, there are other provisions, several provisions, provisions uh, as a matter of fact, of this bill that are not bipartisan and do not reflect agreement on the part of the various stakeholders. For instance, Section 4115, which would repeal a key portion of Section 433 of the Energy Independence and Security Act, the provision that requires federal buildings to be designed to result in decreased consumption of fossil fuels by 2013 is one section among others that we will definitely have to examine further and continue to work on before we reach bipartisan consensus. Mr. Chairman, as this is only a discussion draft and will undergo significant changes, I am satisfied with engaging today's expert witnesses so that we may be better informed on how to, how to improve this draft as we move forward through the legislative process. But, Mr. Chairman, we need to have additional hearings uh, and additional work. Uh, uh, and I know that you will agree with me, Mr. Chairman. With that, I yield back the balance of my time.